Hi, and welcome to today's event where we have the pleasure to present uh, MAPS people. To help us through the presentation, we are joined by, by Lars Bammer, chairman of the board, and of course, Michael Gram, CEO of the company. Uh, the presentation will primarily focus in on the half-year result, but uh, as always, probably also try and take a little bit of a look forward on the guidance and, and what is happening in market, but primarily the half-year results. As always, do not hesitate to, to ask a question down in the box down below. Uh, as an audience, do it through the presentation. Uh, I will see if it fits in. If it doesn't, uh, I will make sure that we catch up on all the questions in the end. But I think for now, uh, I will leave the word to you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. We are always looking forward to present uh, the quarter of uh, the company, how what we have um, made for the last quarter. So, uh, to start with, a few highlights from this quarter. Uh, our AR has grown from 32 million Danish crowns to 51.5 uh, million. This is a total uh, growth of 61%, uh, which we are pretty satisfied with. And that growth, again, consists of a major growth from Mapsidor, which is our main product, uh, a growth on uh, 93%. Our NRR is on 113%. Uh, we are satisfied that it's um, uh, nice above the 100%. However, it has uh, gone a little bit down due to a loss of one unstrategic partner in, in the US. And, and that, of course, will influence on the NRR but however, still uh, on a, a good uh, level above 100%, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, quite satisfying when we're having this, um, this churn from, from this partner. If we take a look at uh, MAPS indoors, especially, um, the main product, of course, is MAPS indoors. And uh, the, the, this account, MAPS indoors, account for 77% of the total ARR uh, end of Q2. Compared to 12 months ago, it was only 71%, and three months ago, it was 74%. We have focused on a number of industries, corporate offices, sports, and conventions, and they account, these three verticals account for 76% of the ARR, and this has grown from, from 69% 12 months ago and uh, to 74% uh, three months ago. And again, uh, another focus area is our sales channel. And our, our sales is very much focused on especially partner sales, OEM partner sales. And the new business in the quarter was on a level of 93% um, of all new business came from partners in MAPS indoors, compared to only 21% in uh, 12 months ago and uh, uh, 57% three months ago. The churn is at an expected level. Uh, that's a churn year to date on 5%. Uh, it was 2% three months ago, but that's accumulated uh, during the year. And uh, compared to last year, it was 9%. So all, all in all, quite satisfying uh, highlights from the quarter. If we take a look on, uh, we have three revenue streams, as you might know. The, the main revenue stream, MAPS Indoors, uh, as you've already seen, uh, consists of, uh, accounts for 77% of the total AR. Google Maps is the, the another revenue stream which accounts for 16%. And then uh, other subscription, which is a legacy product, uh, accounting for only 10%. Other subscription is a, is a, a product that is not growing anymore. Google Maps is growing uh, at, at around 15 to 20% year on year. So all in all, as you can see in the, in the graph in the bottom there, the, the main contribution to our growth is from Maps indoors. The cohort here, um, I like to, uh, you should notice that the, the uh, column at the right hand side that is only for the first six months compared to the other columns, which is the full year. And uh, if you look at uh, 2019 and 2020, they seem to be shrinking a bit uh, so far, but we have still six months to go this year. So we're pretty confident that, that they will grow uh, this year as well. And um, as we have commented before, some of the first version of the product was not that sticky 
So that's what you see from 2017 that this cohort has been uh, churned a bit and the cohort from 2018 is also churned a bit, but still at a, at a steady level uh, right now. The LTV and CAC development has uh, uh, also uh, developed in, in, a, in a matter that we are okay with. And um, that being said, you can see the LTV is going down, but that is due to the fact that we are selling through partners who are selling to the end customers. And they are reaching further out in the, in the uh, ecosystem so that they will reach to smaller customers. So it is expected that the LTV, uh, LTV will go down. The, the, um, the month to recover is going up, but that's due to the fact that we have invested a lot, as you'll see later on, in, in, uh, in strengthening our resources in, uh, in sales, and especially in US and in Asia. So of course, uh, adding more salespeople will uh, affect on the CAC. However, as you can see from the, the difference between LTV and CAC, the um, the ratio there is still uh, about three, so um, that's quite as as uh, expected. Um, there's a bridge here explaining uh, the difference between the the uh, recognized revenue and the, the ARR, and these are the numbers for uh, from first half year. So we the the revenue is consisting of uh, fourteen and a half million. Danish crowns, and on top of that, we have orders agreed with partners, but not yet produced or delivered, uh, which is the next uh, chunk. And the last one is uh, the recognition in terms of uh, months. So if we sign an agreement and deliver it in, in October, we will only be able to recognize it for three months of the, the full uh, value of the, uh, of the agreement. So this is a bridge from the recognized revenue to the ARR, uh, and and um, yeah, that's uh, that's how it works. Uh, looking at the financial highlights here, uh, the revenue for the quarter is on a level of uh, seven point seven million Danish crowns, uh, a growth since uh, um, last quarter, uh, year to date. Uh, 14 and a half million compared to 12 and a half uh, last year at the same time. There's one important comment here is that last year, the Google Maps revenue was based on a gross margin of 20%. And as you uh, might know that we were, uh, Google Maps, Google changed the, the uh, gross margin from 12 to, uh, sorry, from 20 to 12%. Uh, July 1st last year, meaning that the uh, the Google Maps uh, gross profit here is only based on the 12%. If it was on 20%, we would have 2.9 million more uh, ARR from Google Maps. So the 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 growth on on 2 million from last year to this year is actually covering. Uh, uh, um, a churn or a, um, uh, a contraction in the Google Maps uh, gross profit uh, due to the change in the, the gross margin. All in all, uh, gross profit grown to 6.8 million uh, year to date, 12.8. And, uh, and uh, other expenses uh, has grown also uh, year to date to uh, 10.9 million. Uh, uh, cost and uh, totally EBITDA is on an expected level uh, year to date on 23.1 uh, million. I'd like to put a few words on our go to market strategy, which is uh, pretty steady. Uh, this slide has been the same slide uh, all the time we have been uh, presenting here um, with. Uh, HC Anderson Capital, and uh, the main focus for us are the channel focus. As you can see from the numbers, we are quite successful on that part. And our main focus here are the OEM partners, meaning partners having a product, having a SaaS strategy where Maps Indoors is a component in their 
offering to the market. And this strategy is quite successful. Uh, and we will, we will uh, of course, we will uh, focus on this going forward. Another thing is the land expand strategy. We can see that uh, we put pretty much the same effort in selling to a smaller customer with no expansion um, uh, capabilities to, uh, compared to a large customer who has a, a, a huge uh, expansion um, um, possibility. So the uh, land expand strategy is, is really keen for us and we can see a result in that sense uh, because our average customer is uh, growing in size, especially our average partner size is growing a lot. And the industry focus is still uh, corporate office, board entertainment and retail. Uh, we have had retail as a uh, to-go new industry for 2022, but it seems that the, the market for retail is not quite ready yet. Uh, we are ready for, from our part, but as we are doing mapping for of the product on the shelf, we need the industry to be able to pinpoint exactly where the product on the shelf is located, and they are not quite ready. Go over. And then we have a regional focus, um, first of all, on Western Europe uh, and on US. We, we uh, went to the US four years ago, and recently we established an office in Asia. We did that in Q2, and we have now here in Q3 uh, manned up the, uh, the office in Asia with, with four person. So we are uh, we're looking very much forward to see uh, interesting uh, progression from, from the Asian part of uh, the business. Next is uh, the um, part, a bit about the partner channel. We are monitoring, of course, the, the total number of partners, uh, which is uh, consisting of uh, around 60 partners globally. And out of these partners, there are 30 five partners which has a, an ARR contribution above 150,000 Danish crowns. And in, the, the, in Q2, we added uh, another five partner uh, to, uh, at that level. And also, it's very interesting that the average size of the partner is growing. So the average size is a bit below uh, 1 million Danish crowns uh, per agreement for those uh, those partners. And, and this is an average for all of the partners, not only partners above the, the uh, 50,000. So this is an average from, from all partners um, in the company. Uh, a slide here about uh, uh, some of the important partners. The, the, uh, the three uh, rows in the top was uh, also shown in, in the last uh, uh, presentation here. But we are growing the, uh, the agreements with, with these partners uh, overall. Uh, and then in Q Q2, we added uh, five new partners. And three of the, the most interesting ones are uh, Expo Platform, which is in the convention industry, and C Learning in the education industry. That's in UK. Expo Platform is in France. And uh, Way Leader is in the, in the corporate office, or actually it's, uh, it's parking management uh, industry. So they are offering uh, a way of uh, adding a value to the, the parking lot so that you can, if, if a parking lot is not used for a customer, uh, it can be sold to other to, to use um, for, for their parking. And uh, all these are important partners uh, in our partner challenge strategy where Maps Indoors is embedded in their offering. So the objectives for the year is uh, the same. The guidance is still uh, 75 to 85 million for 2022, uh, uh, corresponding to a growth of 82 to 107% uh, growth. So this is a guidance that we have um, announced uh, start of the year and we stick to this guidance for uh, the whole year still. So uh, to recap here, growth in ARR, 93% uh, from Maps and Doors and uh, 61 combined, uh, expanding the channel sales with especially 
OEM partners having Maps Indoors embedded in their offering, expanding the uh, focus verticals, corporate office, sports and conventions, and establishment in Asia Pacific with office in Singapore and now being manned. And last but not least, expanding the sales organization in US where we have hired uh, a number of really experienced uh, salespeople and with a special focus on the partner sales business. So thank you. That was all from me now. Perfect. Uh, shall we take some uh, questions, uh, Michael, and ask you? Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems more and more growth uh, are coming from, from partners. Are you scaling down on your direct sale? And what are the risks from partners? Uh, do, I know they are nice, they are cheaper, they are, but do you see any risk that those are driving your, your growth and, and not from your own uh, hands of control? Uh, yeah, uh, i like to put an answer here, but maybe you can add also, Lars. Uh, we are, we expect to round um, between 90, uh, 80 to 90 percent uh, of the AR will come from partners going forward. Um, However, we will keep still have direct sales because selling to uh, Fortune 500, that's what we're aiming for as well. They, uh, most of them, they would not go through a partner. So that would still be direct sales. And also building strong references that would also mainly go, go through direct sales. And going into a new reading, we realized that we need to have some direct sales there to have to build up strong references because reference from Europe cannot be used in US or in Asia and mm -hmm. and same from reference from US US some of them can be used in Asia like JP Morgan but but we need to grow local references and that would be would be through direct sales and talking to about partners and risk there's one thing here that we realized and and that's related to uh or downgrading the outlook for the uh, the uh, revenue, uh, that that's an extra extra um, part in the chain, the delivery chain with the partners. So we need our partners to to uh, ramp up with their sales because they have we have an agreement that with them that they have signed, uh, but we need them to to uh, go to the market faster. To get it, it recognition, the, the recognition in our books uh, earlier. Yeah, and I can I can add in regards to risk from partners that we are we are primarily seeking OEM partners. So we we have Maps and Doors embedded in the partners' final solution for for their clients or their products, and 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 having having that is actually de-risking our business because. Every time our partners are selling one product, we will be added, and we, we will get a, a, a part of the uh, of the sales. So uh, so and, and that is actually also uh, one of the next questions why the LTV uh, is is falling is because our the, the partner sales are primarily smaller customers, so it's a smaller license and a smaller payment per uh, per account. So that's why the LTV is. Um, is, is falling. We are getting much more customers, but with a lower ARPA or ARP. ARPA. Okay, so it, it, it's driven by the ARPA, the average revenue per, per, per account that that is falling. And of course, even if your churn is not falling, then the lifetime value will also fall. So that is the that's the reason why you mentioned partner and <coughs> and 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 and, 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 and to me. Yeah, Michael, of course, a, a hotel that is a customer of Aeroguest uh maybe eight thousand or twelve thousand uh, square meters pay much less than linkedin or uh of course what, what one of one of the the major clients and one more important thing to add here um uh, when we start with a partner it it uh, not very often but sometimes we are a, an optional uh, part of their solution but more and more partners uh, we are a mandatory part and, and that's linked to what uh, Lars said here. We will be a part of the business every time they sell a new uh, license to a new customer. So if, if I should understand, you know, you vetting your partners and, and finding the most, you know, the one who really goes out and, and do something in, in the market. I, I, I guess that that is how you try to minimize the risk that, that you yeah. 
don't have some expectation expectation from partners, but you know they don't get up their flat ass, you know, <laughs> as, as I can say, huh? uh, not so nice. But but I, I think when people talk about partner risk, it is that you expect a partner to go and do something, and then they down, you know, downgrade the, the what they want to do in that segment. So right. this is the vetting that that makes you more comfortable on that risk. It, it is, and in that sense, uh, it's really important to have new strong partners like Rico and and. Uh, uh, Siemens uh, on board here because they are really serious and and they are they are really heavy uh, and they're serious with going out with with their product with our product as a mandatory part. And next, there's a question here, uh, the, uh, the Rico. Uh, have you seen any re result from your new uh, partnership there with them already? Uh, yes, we have. And and what happens usually is like uh, Rico and also for Vodafone. Uh, they are implemented in their own office to start with to educate their own uh, sales staff. So, so we have we are now uh, doing the the uh, Rico offices, and we have uh, years years ago we did the the Vodafone offices to educate their their staff uh, on on the value of value proposition of their own product with with Maps endorsed embedded. So, if uh, yes, and. Uh... There's a question here. CAC is increasing. Uh, what what is the reason behind that? Is that your investment uh, in Asia uh, uh, and that? So are they allocated to the new sales uh, out there? Yeah, we have, we have we have clearly seen a, a raise in, in the CAC, and that's due to the investments in the market since the IPO last uh, last summer. So so of course we have we have put more fire on the or more wood on the fire uh, past twelve months to uh, to 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 grow. And uh, and we see the results now. We have a uh, nice growth rates, and uh, and we see uh, still a nice uh, combination between the between the investments and and the uh, race in in AR. Yes. Do you see any hesitation from client? Con con uh, it's concerning your ambitious uh, guidance. You know, still need to to grow very strongly in the second half of the year. Actually, actually not. Um, we see that uh, that there's a, a higher demand uh, and there's a pull in uh, in in the market that we have not seen before. Uh, our partners is coming with with customers that are much more uh, ready for uh, for taking in a solution. Uh, we are kind of first movers in uh, in, in this industry. We are we are removing all kinds of old manual stuff, uh, making indoor wayfinding and, and indoor mapping digital. Um, so so uh, we we see an enormous uh, growth in, in in this market, and the partners and the 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 average pipeline size in in our direct sales are much much bigger than we have ever seen before. So. Uh, so we are quite confident that uh, that we will yeah. we, we will we'll reach these targets, and also uh, especially in the US, we have received some um, very big leads via Google uh, for some of the the big players in the manufacturing industry. Uh, we're not allowed to tell the name here, but uh, Google they are approach uh, they approach Google to to get some help with this, and Google uh, sent these leads forward, and we. We close some significant deals in that sense in the US, and, and they, are, they are direct deals. And, and, and uh, when we, I know uh, there's a lot of question always about this economic climbing and as hesitance with with, 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 with with the customers, do they pro pro postpone some investment or something like that? So if you kind of should give a, a, a sense of your feeling with the industries you are in, uh, the corporate office, people moving back, that's a trend that economic downturn will not break and, and, and the need for some solution that means you know you can try and postpone it but you need it where, where do you feel you are lying and you know how uh, how how much is you needed uh, no matter how the e e economy is your feel of, of of your solution we saw from covid of course that that uh, uh, airports and uh, sports venues and also convention they they have had really hard times but, but they have for sure recovered uh, since COVID. And so far we haven't seen much effect from the 
economy going a bit down uh, in, in these verticals. So I think that uh, we, we're seeing a, a, a nice, maybe a bit slower traction, but, but we are, we're seeing a, a growth still in, in all, all verticals. There's no vertical affected, especially from, from the uh, development in the com economy, econ economy and, uh, and everyone's recovered from, uh, from COVID. And then there's a question here about your co the, the competitive situation out there. You we talked uh, in a lot of uh, events earlier on that some of your your competitors, direct competitors, were being picked up by those large integrators, you know, service now and such stuff. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing anything changing in the competitive landscape because of maybe that uh, wave we've seen uh, going a little bit back? Uh, nothing the recent uh, three months uh, especially uh, what you mentioned there that uh, serve now acquired uh, mapwise that was the last big chunk seen in the market however we have got some requests for from uh, companies reaching out to us if we were interested in in acquiring uh, um, a, a smaller company um, um, however if 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 it's new technology, we might be interested. But if it's customers only, we're not that interested because uh, it doesn't make much sense for us. But, but there are some consolidation trends still uh, going on. And then this question: Thank you for good year year and year to date comparison. Can you please elaborate a bit on your financial per performance compared to the previous expectation forecast? You know. Uh, uh, looking at your budgets, uh, your forecast, uh, how how do you feel you are you are aligned there? We are we are quite aligned with the, with all our plans actually. Uh, what we see is the revenue is a bit behind, uh, but uh, but we we managed to to bridge that uh, via cost reduction. So we are not staffing up in uh, especially in the in the deployment uh, department. Uh, and we are leveraging that uh, all the time, so so that our cash burn is uh, is in line with with expectations. Um, so we are uh, on the half year. We are a, a bit uh, better uh, on both EBITDA and and our cash position than uh, than the plan for the year. Perfect. And, and then the, actually the, the the last question coming in here. Any thoughts on your capital situation? I know it's a little bit of an open uh, question, but uh, growth versus uh, growth versus uh, earnings, uh, or how much you want to spend on this growth, looking into 23 and, and capital situation, and of course the the cost of capital out there in the, in the market, uh, unfortunately rising right now due to to the to the bad financial market. So, any thoughts on where you are seeing you and and, and how you are thinking maybe about this? Absolutely, and we have a lot of thoughts on that, uh, and we are monitoring that all the time. Um, as said, we are we are on the plan, uh, and 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 the business plan uh, and the uh, prospectus that we we disclosed at the IPO was a fully financed business plan. Um, if we see still some lack in the in the revenue recognition, um, we will maybe for 23 uh, uh, lower our expectations we are, right now we are looking at plus 100 percent growth rates and and i i would uh, personally i would expect that 75 percent would be good if if that was what it uh, would take to to eliminate uh, this problem um and of course with the growth rates that we have we have several uh, different uh, Things to 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 use or, or tools to use uh, in, in regards to the capital situation. So, um, so we are monitoring this. Of course, we are. Uh, we are we are still burning, uh, but we we also have uh, credit lines at uh, at the Vext Fund and growth, the Danish Growth Fund that we have not uh, used yet. I know that we can use. So, uh, so it's uh, we 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 have uh, we have cash enough to uh, to to continue this journey for, 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 for quite some time. And we are, of course, uh, looking into this uh, at, at every board meeting and also in the time uh, between. 
If I can ask a question on that, are you reaching, I know you can always hire more people, invest more in growth, but are you actually reaching a fast ramp up? I think you went to above 100 FTEs. So are you reaching some kind of a level where you are comfortable with that could drive strong growth rate? So we kind of can look at, I, I don't want you to say this is the uh, 14 million in, uh, in staff costs is the exact number you can look for in the future, but are you kind of comfortable with that, that you have ramped up to, to kind of a level so we can start looking at the gross margin, your revenue, and then how much of this will finance? Yeah, and, and, and we can do that. And we, we, we have reached that point of scale. Uh, what we are, what we have to invest in uh, in the future and, and maybe for a long time is the automation. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to uh, be able to deliver our maps with very low costs uh, and with very low time. Mm -hmm. So actually, I think this will, here, here time will be of essence because we see that the partners with small with smaller customers with a, a smaller revenue per customer end, end customer we need automated uh, maps and we need a fast delivery time and so so that is uh, that was one one of the things that we really have to invest into we are, uh, we are pretty far in that journey but there's still a way to go to reach our target we have find a target called maps in minutes uh, but um, there's uh, still uh, a lot to do to to reach that level and if i should understand is that because maybe your industry industry is moving to even you know small houses that would like to have it you know as on an app and that means the factory you know you should be able to download it and then it works and then you de facto actually should be able to deliver the maps you know at you know, at an instant, are your business moving in, in that direction? Is that one of the reasons why you need to be fast? Not not that far, I think. So it, it should bring value. If, if you have a smaller venue that you can pretty easily overview, it makes no sense. So usually we say that it should be a, above 10,000 square meter before it makes sense. But still, a lot of our customers, they are talking about millions of square meters. So there's a lot of business to, to go for uh about the, the ten thousand square meter but it, it not be a family home i don't think so but oh, uh, no, I, I, it was just an example you know everybody yeah, expects but, they, but, they can download an app and then it works you know even a business or something like yes. that uh, as as last said uh, hotels uh, maybe schools or public administration buildings which are a, a couple of thousand but in total a number of building maybe uh, is is a uh, uh, 10 or 20, 30,000 uh, square meter. Uh, that makes sense. And, and uh, that's something that we will not go for, but some of our partners are going for that. Perfect. Thank you, Lars and Michael. I think we went through all the questions from, from the audience. And thank you to the audience for listening in. And may everybody have a, a very nice day. Thank you. Thank you.